Hello, welcome to our trigonometry lesson on section 7.6. We're going to cover the double and half angle formula. We have five double angle formulas. Turns out there's three different ones for cosine of two theta. You're going to need to know all of those as well as the three half angle formulas. So let's get started. For our first example, we're going to be given that sine theta is 3 over 5 and that 0 is less than theta and theta is less than pi over 2. So this is given information here. They're going to want us to find sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, sine of theta over 2, and cosine of theta over 2. So there's four things we're going to find. The first thing I need to point out is uh, here they've told me that theta is greater than zero but less than pi over two. What they're trying to say is that theta is a quadrant one angle. And now to go and find what they asked for. First, they ask us to find, we'll call this part A, sine of two theta. So we can see that our formula for sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And we know sine theta. What we don't know is cosine theta, so we're going to have to find that. So here's what we know. We know that sine is y over r. If I know y and r, I can find x. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find x, and then we can know cosine of theta. Here we go. x squared plus y, which is 3, squared, r, which is 5, squared. And then we're going to solve this for x. So 5 squared, that's 25 minus 9, which is 16. If I take the square root of both sides, I get x is 4. And so now I have enough information that I can now find sine of 2 theta. So that's going to be 2 times sine of theta, which was 3 fifths, and times cosine of theta. Remember, cosine is x over r, which will be 4 fifths. And then all I need to do is the multiplication, and I'll have my answer. So making that a fraction, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. And that's going to be 24 over 1 times 5 times 5. So my answer is going to be 24 20 fifths for sine of 2 theta, and now that's done. Now for part B, they want me to find cosine of 2 theta. Well, I want to draw your attention back to what we were given. We were given sine of theta. If I'm trying to pick which of the three cosine of 2 theta formulas I want to use, it's probably going to be the last one since it involves sine of theta. And that's what I was given. So we're going to be using the last formula. Here we've got cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 times sine theta squared. And then I just need to work this out. So order of operations, 3 fifths squared. That's going to be 9 20 fifths. Multiplying that by 2, that's going to be 18 20 fifths. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this 1 into 25 20 fifths. And then I just need to subtract. 25 minus 18, that's going to be 7 20 fifths. And that's going to be my cosine of 2 theta. 
And so that's it for the double angle formulas that they ask me to find. The next thing I want to do is I want to find sine of theta over 2. Okay, so I'm going to come over here a little bit. We're going to call this part C, sine of theta over 2 is what they ask for. Now, notice that sine of theta over 2, it says plus or minus. That doesn't mean you get to pick whichever one you want, and it doesn't mean it's both of them. It means you're going to have to determine whether it's going to be a positive or a negative outcome. So remember where they gave us that theta was in quadrant one? Well, now that's important. Because if I take a quadrant one angle and I cut it in half, it's still going to be a quadrant one angle. So that means that this answer is going to be positive. So we're going to choose the positive fraction. That's going to be the square root of. 1 minus cosine theta. Remember back where we did it over here? Cosine was 4 fifths. That's going to be 4 fifths all over 2. And my square root went a little bit big there. And then I'm going to need to simplify that. So for sine theta over 2, that's going to be the square root of. Uh, 1 can be expressed as 5 fifths minus 4 fifths all over 2. And then that can be expressed as, if I add my fractions here, that's 5 fifths minus 4 fifths is 1 fifth. And then I'm going to write this like this, divided by 2. That's 1 fifth divided by 2 which I can now do the keep change flip, which means we're going to change this to multiplication and flip the two, which will be one fifth times one over two, which is going to be the square root of one over the square root of 10. Now notice I went ahead and split that up, square root of top and the bottom, and the square root of one is just one, but the square root of 10 doesn't square root, and we're probably going to need to rationalize that. Okay, so to rationalize the denominator, we're going to multiply the top and bottom by square root of 10, and that's going to give us a final answer of square root of 10 over 10. That is the exact answer rationalized. And now we have one more piece that we need to find. We're going to call this part D. This is going to be cosine of theta over 2. And so now we're going to need the formula for cosine of theta over 2. Again, that has plus or minus. Again, you're going to have to determine whether it's going to be a positive or a negative. And since we're in quadrant 1, if I take half of theta, if I take half of a quadrant one angle, that's still going to be in quadrant one, which means our answer will be positive. And so this time it's going to be the square root of one plus cosine theta over two. Square root of one plus cosine theta, which was four fifths over two. And then we're going to do the same work that we did previously. So for cosine of theta over 2, that's going to be the square root of 5 fifths plus 4 fifths all over 2. This time we're adding, so it's going to be square root of 9 fifths divided by 2. Doing the keep change flip, cosine theta over 2, that's going to be 9 fifths. If I do the keep change flip, that's going to be multiplied by 1 over 2, which will be 9 tenths. And then I'm going to split that up. Square root of 9 is 3. 
and the square root of 10 won't square root, so we're going to have to rationalize that. And our final answer for cosine of theta over 2 is going to be 3 square root of 10 over 10. And that is the simplified answer rationalized. And that's it for our first example covering the double and half angle formulas. Next example. This one's going to be way less work. This time all they want us to find is sine of 22.5 degrees. And they want us to find the exact value. So if I'm thinking of a double or a half angle formula here, what probably happened was we took half of a unit circle angle to get a 0.5. So then you're going to have to come up with what angle would you take half of to get 22.5. And it shouldn't take long to come up with 45. 45 divided by 2 is 22.5. And so this, since this is an angle divided by 2, this is going to be a half angle formula. So we're going to be using the sine of theta over 2, which is the square root of 1 minus cosine theta. Okay, so do you see that? 1 minus cosine theta where theta is the number we're taking half of, which in this case is 45 degrees all over 2. And then we're going to need to, well, work that out. So does anybody happen to know what the cosine of 45 degrees is? What is the x coordinate at 45? I think it's square root of 2 over 2 all over 2. And then we're going to have to get a common denominator. So 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 all over 2 is going to end up being the square root of 2 minus square root of 2 all over 2 divided by 2. So I'm sticking this fraction divided by 2, and I'm converting it into a divided by symbol so that I can do the keep change flip, keep change flip, and then multiply straight across. So that's going to give me square root of 2 minus square root of 2 all over square root of 2, and then that's going to need to be rationalized. So if I multiply top and bottom by square root of 2, since these both have a square root in the top, we can actually take this 2 and distribute it. So that'll be square root of 4 minus 2 square root of 2 all over 2. And that should be the final answer rationalized. That should be the final answer rationalized. Um, I think it might be fun to actually check that in the calculator. So in degree mode, let's do sine of 22.5, which it gives me 0.38268. Okay, so let's see if we get the same decimal approximation here, let me write that down, 0.38268, approximately, and we'll see if our rationalized answer is correct. So we're going to have square root of 4 minus 2 square root of 2 all over 2 equals, and that is a different decimal, which means I have made a mistake. Somehow I made a mistake. Let's hit clear and see what I did here. 
There it is right there. 2 times 2 is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I didn't actually need to do this rationalized step. So the final answer should have been square root of 2 minus square root of 2 all over the square root of 4, which is 2. So let's see if that checks out. Square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 2. There we go. Fixed. Made a mistake. It happens. All right, next example. Let's say that we have tangent of 7 pi over 8. And the instructions say find the exact value. Tangent of 7 pi over 8 can also be expressed as 7 pi over 4 divided by 2. Okay, now check that out. If I divide by 2, that's the same as multiply by a half, and that'll get me back to 7 pi over 8. So this is going to be a theta over 2 formula, tangent of theta over 2 formula. And we know that the original angle 7 pi over 8 is almost 8 pi over 8. So that means that this is in quadrant 2. And we know that tangent in the second is negative. So we're going to expect this outcome to be a negative answer. So let's see if we have a tangent of theta over 2 formula. We do. Tangent of theta over 2, 1 minus cosine theta divided by sine theta. So this is going to be 1 minus where theta is 7 pi over 4. So that's going to be 1 minus cosine of 7 pi over 4 divided by sine of 7 pi over 4. And now all we need to do is have a unit circle handy, which I have here off to the side. And at 7 pi over 4, the x coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. And the y coordinate is negative square root of 2 over 2. And to get rid of the complex fractions, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. So that's going to give me, if I distribute this 2 here, 2 minus square root of 2, because these 2's cancel, all over negative square root of 2. And then if I rationalize this by multiplying by negative square root of 2, top and bottom, this is going to distribute. And I'm going to do this way first, okay? So a negative times a negative makes a positive. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. And then over to here, would be negative 2 square root of 2 all over negative times a negative makes a positive, and that's going to be 2. And then these 2s will all cancel, giving me 1s. 1 minus square root of 2 should be my final answer for tangent of 7 pi over 8. Now that value is actually negative, like we mentioned. Because square root of 2 is about 1.4, 1, 1 minus 1 1.4 would be a negative number. So this is actually negative, like we anticipated. And I think the calculator will check that if I put it in 
the right mode. So let's go to radian mode and do tangent of 7 pi over 8. And that gives us the decimal approximation of 1 minus square root of 2, which is the same as what we got from tangent of 7 pi over 8. Okay. All right, I've got another example to look at. And in this example, we're going to have secant of 2 theta equals secant squared theta all over 2 minus secant squared theta. So this is going to be uh, proving an identity or verifying an identity. This is going to be more like a trig proof. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the left-hand side, since it's a double angle formula, and see if we can turn it into the right-hand side. And the first thing I'm going to do is use a reciprocal identity. So secant is 1 over cosine. And remember, the goal is to get here. So the next step is we're going to use a cosine of 2 theta identity. And the one we're going to use is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. That's the identity that we're going to use. And then the next step is to use another reciprocal identity knowing that uh, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So I can turn that back into secant by flipping it over. And then the next step is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by secant squared theta. And the reason I'm doing that really is to get these, these guys right here to cancel. But this secant squared theta has to distribute in the denominator. In the numerator, it's just going to be secant squared theta. In the denominator, the secant squared theta is going to cancel. And that's going to leave me 2 times 1, which is 2 minus, and then the secant squared theta times 1 is secant squared theta. And now if you notice, we're where we needed to be. So this, these are the steps to verify this trigonometric identity. That's the answer to doing the trig proof. And then I've got one more example to look at, and then we're going to be done with this lesson. All right, so the next example, let's say that we have cosine of 2 theta plus 6 sine squared theta equals 4. This time we have an equation, and they want us to find all of the angles between 0 and pi over 2 that satisfy the equation. 0 less than or equal to theta less than uh, 2 pi. We're looking for all of the angles between 0 and 2 pi that are going to be solutions to this equation, okay? And so the first step here is to replace cosine of 2 theta with one of the cosine of 2 theta formulas and what's going to help me determine which one to choose is the fact that I've got sine squared theta here. So I'm going to replace cosine of 2 theta with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and that's going to put everything in terms of sine of theta. 
Okay, so the next step then would be to combine like terms. And I'm going to go ahead and move this one over, makes that a minus one. So six minus two is four sine squared theta equals three and then divide both sides by four and that's going to give me sine squared theta equals three fourths and now to get rid of the squared taking the square root of both sides Gives me sine of theta is, don't forget when you take the square root of both sides, you get a plus and a minus answer. The square root of three doesn't square root, but the square root of four is two. And so now I'm basically done. I just need to go to the unit circle and find all of the angles theta that have a y coordinate of plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. All of the angles that have a y coordinate of positive or negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so if you have your unit circle handy, that's going to be at pi over 3 to pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. All of those angles are going to be solution to that equation. And that's going to be it for this lesson, okay? So if you have any questions or comments about anything I've covered, feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.